Yes guys, welcome back guys for a brand new video guys on my channel guys and yes guys, I'm going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played. Arsenal guys, away from home at the Emirates Stadium guys, where Manchester United went and lost the game, three goals to one, where we saw a lot of VAR controversy in this game as well. United could have won this game, we could have nicked the three points, but positive performance by United, I think it got taken away from us to be honest. Lost for words, we have to take it on the chin, got to improve, we've got to get better, we've got to win the next game. But anyway guys, I made one change from last game against Nottingham Forest. Talking about the starting level, so we started with Onana, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Martinez, Dallo, Casemiro, Eriksen, Anthony, Fernandez, Rashford and Martial. Getting to the overall reaction now, VAR is a joke, we got robbed and we did get robbed, VAR is corrupt, we should have won, they didn't deserve to win, it's a tough one to take. I can't believe it. I'm lost for words. It's disappointing, annoying and frustrating. Shit defending. At the end, we should have had a penalty and a foul as well. Last six minutes wasn't good enough. The decisions didn't go our way yet again. Poor officiating lost us the game. It was an okay start. United needed to take Arsenal out of their comfort zone. No attacking threat. United having loads of passes at the back. Arsenal putting the pressure on, Arsenal on the front foot, United just can't get hold of possession, United haven't really got going yet, Arsenal getting back into shape, making it hard for United to play in between the lines, United settled into the game, United haven't created any passes in the final third, United playing it very cautious, United haven't really created any chances, mistake by Havertz, Ericsson had a lot of time and space in the midfield and Rashford scores for 1-0, United not concentrated on focusing, stupidly concede for 1-1, United need to stay calm and composed, United want to take control of the game, United getting better in the game, competitive, end-to-end, -end open game, in the last 10 minutes United dominated the game, it's been tight and tactical, okay first half, need to be more proactive going forward, Arsenal will look to press United and stop passing around the back. United staying in good shape, United setting up for the counter, Arsenal on the front foot, Arsenal controlling and dominating the game, Arsenal creating some chances, United can't get out of their own half, Marshall had a good chance, Havertz wins a penalty but VAR gets the correct decision, Ten Hag makes a few substitutions, United staying patient, United starting to build a few attacks, United in good without the ball, Saka had a big chance but great save by Onana, Arsenal controlling, United have had some promising attacks, Ganacho scored Good, but offside, he causes VAR controversy. The wide players have done fantastic to track back and defensively were brilliant. Arsenal fans knew they could get something out of it. Rice scores for 2-1, foul on Evans, just not concentrated and focusing. Poor defending, Jesus scores for 3-1. Poor refereeing decisions costed us. We have to take it on the chin, learn from it. It is what it is, onwards and upwards, we move on. First half was okay, second half was good. Overall, positive performance. Anyway guys, let's get straight into today's video. What did I make of the performance? I thought the performance as a whole for large parts of that game for about I'd say about 90 odd minutes but it was a positive performance by Manchester United I do think we sort of switched off towards the end of the game I think we sort of switched off the last sort of six minutes of the game where it was poor defending by Manchester United and we should never have conceded those two late goals uh, towards the end but I still don't believe that. To be honest though, you look at, you analyse that game back, I don't think Arsenal deserve to win. When you look at that, the way how they played in the second half as well, we see, yes, the result says different. As United fans, we have to accept it that we lost. 3-1. She can't be playing Maguire Evans at the back as well. They've both got a mistake in them. That's what's going to happen as well when you're playing two jokers at the back. It's disappointing, annoying and frustrating to walk away. Another loss. Four games, two losses. It's not good enough. We look positive for large parts of that game. I thought we went toe-to-toe -to -toe and we went really towards the end of the game. Just unfortunate that we didn't have any luck and uh, the decisions went against us yet again, which I think costed us the game, which would have won us the game as well. I'm still fuming over the those decisions as well, uh, particularly the Ganacho goal as well, which I'll get into as well. The performance overall was positive for large parts of it, just not good enough with the last sort of five, six minutes. We were just not alert and we were not concentrated and not focusing, just switched off, can't concede goals like that. You get punished for them and we got punished. The result says different. It says Arsenal won, we lost. Not an easy one to take. It's one of them where you really dig deep, really hard and you've done everything that you possibly can do, you know, to get a draw out of it and then to you know, walk away with a loss. It's just one of them at the end of the day. All that boils down to is VAR was a joke. 
of the game. We got robbed. Villa is corrupt. We should have won that game. We would have been game set and match when Ganacho scored that goal. It's a tough one to take, definitely for sure. And I'm lost for words. We have to move on, take it on the chin, learn from it, make sure it doesn't happen again. We know that we're going to have to get better. We're going to have to improve. We're going to have to win the next game. It's a tough task. We need to be ready for the next game. Anyway, guys, getting into the game now. I thought it was an okay start by United, to be honest with you. Um, I thought... And these sort of games against Arsenal, going to the Emirates, it's always going to be a tough game. You're in for a tough game. And I think, you know, United sort of did okay at the beginning of the, uh, at the, beginning of the game. I thought we did, we went, we were all right. I thought we had uh, loads of passes at the back, uh, which Arsenal just couldn't prevent us uh, of stopping that. Uh, but we also had to sort of take them out of their comfort zone as well. And when you and with Arsenal to take them out of the comfort zone, they like a lot of possession, and that means that we had to have a lot of possession in that game as well. So, so yeah, uh, that's what you have to do against Arsenal. But you know, from United though, there was just no real uh, ambition at the beginning of the game. We sort of struggled to get into the game. There was no real attacking threat at the beginning. You know, but we were having all these passes at the back. Uh, you know, Arsenal putting the pressure on on the front foot. You know, United uh, just couldn't get hold of possession. I think, you know, we, that was where we sort of struggled at the beginning of the game to sort of get going. And we sort of couldn't, couldn't get into our rhythm and we couldn't get into our flow as well into the game. And uh, we hadn't really got, we hadn't really not got going yet as well. And Arsenal were getting back into shape, making it hard. United are playing between the lines. Uh, you know, United has eventually sort of like settled into the game. You know, we hadn't really created uh, any passes in the final third, which we sort of struggled in when we got forward as well. So there was times in the first half where we sort of lacked ideas and we could have been better in, but we were very cautious as well. Uh, but we hadn't really created many chances uh, in the first half. But then we knew that a mistake, you've got to punish them sometimes and a mistake by Havertz uh, allowed Ericsson a lot of time and space on the ball in the midfield and Rashford scores a brilliant goal for 1-0 um, and then stupidly never uh, obviously uh, ne stupidly never uh, uh, going back to last season where we conceded a stupid goal right after that and we conceded for 1-1 just not concentrating and focusing. We need to stay calm and composed. You know, we want to take control of the game. Uh, you know, United were getting into the game more as well. Uh, you know, and then as the game was getting on, yeah, we were getting better. But I thought it was competitive. It was end-to-end. -end. It was an open game. Uh, you could see that as well. But then in the last sort of 10 minutes, United dominated the game. It had been tight and tactical uh, for the sort of the whole... 45 minutes as well and then in the second half it was down to you know who wanted it more than I think and I think it was all down to you know who could uh, walk away with the three point. well not walk away with the three points but uh, I think whoever wanted it more and who won whoever you know definitely showed a bit more determination uh, got over the line and won this game but I thought you know United needed to play more proactive going forward in the second half, and Arsenal will probably will look to press United and stop passing around the back as well. But I thought United were in good shape, we were organised, you know, we were setting up for the counter as well. But you know, Arsenal, you know, straight away in the first half, they got on the front foot, they were controlling, dominating the game. They were, I think they were, has, I think they were creating some chances, but I think there were half chances to be honest. There was not. I don't think they really created many clear-cut chances, Arsenal, in that second half, to be honest with you. I don't think they really troubled us. They got the front foot. Uh, you know, they were dangerous. They were a threat. But, you know, United dealt with it. And I think, you know, I think that all boiled down to, you know, the wide players trapping back and defensively doing their job as well. And I think that's why United were really good in that second half because... We kept it tight and compact. We made it difficult for Arsenal as well in the second half, a majority of it in the second half. And I think they just found those little bits of spaces uh, high up the pitch uh, and they just caught us out. Uh, and that's how they got their goals. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I thought, you know, United was sort of 
struggling to get out of her own half. You know, Marshall had a good chance. And then obviously, you know, Havertz won a penalty, uh, which obviously was the correct decision by VAR. Ted Hall made a couple of substitutions to see a bit of a difference and to get a bit of, uh, to make players make an impact in the game as well. But United stayed patient. Um, you know, we were building some promising attacks as well. Yeah, you know, you know, United have been good without the ball. Saka had a big chance, but it was a great save by Anana. Anana made some brilliant saves to give us in the game at big moments as well. I thought Arsenal controlled the game as well in the second half, but yeah, you know, United were making some good promising attacks. You know, Hoyland, uh, penalty shout as well. Was it potentially a penalty? And then obviously the big one, you know, Ganacho threw one on one with a goalie. Um, they call it offside. I think he's onside. Uh, I think that's a clear goal for me. And I thought, you know, the wide players did brilliantly well. And uh, Arsenal knew, the, the Arsenal fans knew that they could still get something out of it. And then Rice goes and scores for 2 1. I think there's a foul on Evans there. And then we were just not concentrating and focusing. I think it was poor defending. Jesus scores for 3 1. And then the poor decision, referee, uh, and then the poor refereeing decision is just really costed us at, uh, towards the end of the game. And the result didn't go our way, but it is what it is. We have to take it on the chin and we have to simply move on from it. It's not good enough, but um, yeah, it went Arsenal's way, but I don't think they deserved to win that, to be honest with you. The way how they were playing, I don't think they deserved to win. Overall, it was a positive performance for large parts of the game, but the result didn't go our way. It's a tough one to take. It looks like Ganacho scored the winner. We took all three points, but VAR said different. Was it the decisions didn't go our way and we just simply didn't get any luck? Possibly, I think so. Possibly, definitely, I think the decisions didn't go our way. I think the main one was the VAR decision that we didn't get with Ganacho's goal. I think that's... A clear goal for me, clear on side. They're trying to see what Gabriel's done. They're looking at his shoulder and then Ganacho's arm. Ganacho's clearly on side. His boot's not off on that red line or anything. So I think it's a small margin. It's a tight margin. It's a big call, but I think he's clearly on side. Definitely for sure. I think that's one decision that should have gone our way. But also early in the game as well, we should have had a penalty on Hoyland. And that's a clear penalty as well. So that could have been easily been 2-1. So these sort of decisions could have changed the game for United as well, for sure. If that penalty decision went our way, that could have been 2-1. Ganacho scores. It's 3-1. It could have been game set and match definitely for sure for United we would have definitely walked away with the three points but I don't think we've got any luck yet again I think any other day we would have got some luck a decision would have gone our way definitely for sure but VAR said different thought the referee in the whole game was a joke to be honest and also the VAR was a farce as well an absolute joke an absolute farce it was corrupt as well I mean for large parts of that game I thought we were absolutely brilliant to be honest I thought we were really good in that game for 90 odd minutes but obviously Arsenal showed a brilliant response to get back into the game when they went 1-0 down United again just didn't learn from last season when we conceded right away. The exact same thing happened yet again. We were just not concentrating and not focusing. Our eye off the ball. And then the defence was sleeping yet again. I think defensively we've not been great in the first four games. You can clearly see that. Got away with one against Wolves. Conceded two against Forest. Conceded three against Arsenal. And then conceded two against Tottenham. It's not good. We need to get tighter. And we need to be a lot more better defensively. Offensively, I think there's definitely some calls that we could do better in we can improve on definitely for sure offensive wise but defensively needs a big improvement at the back for the next game it just goes to show already conceded about a good i think it's seven goals already we've got to get tighter the defense needs to learn how to defend properly in these certain situations but i think definitely for sure the decisions didn't go our way any other day they would have gone our way didn't get any luck as we always do always fuck us over that's what happens at the end of the day when you've got a crap referee in charge when a Type VAR call doesn't go your way as well, which could have changed the game and it didn't. We have to take it. We have to take the result on the chin. It's a tough one to take for the players, for the staff. We have to take it on the chin. We have to learn from it. We have to move on at the end of the day. Should Hoyland got given a penalty? I think definitely. I think that's clear penalty for me. This is another call that could have been given as well. I think Gabriel 
wrestled him to the ground. I think that's a clear penalty. There was some shouts for it. Obviously, the referee was not interested, thinks that they don't give them. Just little things like this, not being checked. When they're not being checked and you don't have a look, and these little certain things can change the game, to be honest. I thought throughout the whole game, VAR, thought in one decision, VAR got one call right in the game with Havertz's penalty. A few of the calls were dodgy. Definitely, they should have gone in our favour. I think this is one of them that should have gone in our favour. Simply didn't go our way. No luck. Yeah, again, there was obviously the goal Ganacho scored, a perfectly good goal that would have seen United beat Arsenal and take all three points. It got taken away from us. It caused a lot of controversy. In my opinion, was he onside or offside? I think he's onside. I think this is another call. I think this is where VAR is corrupt because how can you say this is offside and i'm sorry a few pictures here one of them is on your screen right now and this is where you see he's offside that is not offside you can clearly see he's onside there and there's another one that i'm going to put on the screen on top of this video right now andy goldenstein on talksport took that offside decision and then he's drew another line to see that he's onside this is an absolute farce and this is where var has got this massively wrong you've got mike dean that's there at the game saying that var got the call right it's had an absolute stinker in this game VAR and it's just been an absolute farce this is where it's corrupt it's broken VAR ruining the sport you can't celebrate a goal scored a perfectly good goal you're clear on side it gets taken away from you which would have seen United win this game 2-1 and we would have took all three points and this is what you have to live with at the end of the day and then the result goes Arsenal's way just says everything about VAR not good enough this is what happens managers might bitch and moan about decisions that don't go their way where's our apology that's what all I'm saying is we've not got our apology for the Tottenham game yet we've not got one out of this game as well I think it's clear onside I think they've had an absolute stinker here it's clearly onside for me he's not offside it's a tight margin it's tight it's fine margins yeah but at the end of the day I think he's clear onside here I think they've had an absolute stink. I think it's broken at the end of the day. It's clearly onside. It's a clear goal. Changes the game and United win the game 2-1. United played four games, won two and lost two. Has the international break come at the right time? Definitely. I think it's one of these situations where United have been in up, down, up, down. Not found any consistency to yet. Haven't really got going yet in the league. United are just finding their whereabout at the minute as well. Obviously, the performances, I'd say at least three of the performances have not been great. One of them, the last game against Arsenal was a positive one but the result didn't go our way I think the international breaks come at the right time I think it's definitely gives Ten Hag to sort of analyse all four games back definitely gives him a lot of time to analyse back Brighton as well for the next game I think it's nice for players to recover recuperate go again and obviously for the players that are going internationals to get away for a bit come back with a better mindset more of a winning mentality we have to get straight down to work because we've got some bigger games coming up now in the next couple of weeks and we're gonna have to focus for them concentrate as well we've got some big games where we're gonna have to turn up we need some big performances as well we will put it together eventually but it's gonna take time you have to stick by it it will come United. Three of the performances have been dodgy, not been great, not been convincing but we've had only one good solid performance so far and it didn't go our way so it'll come, it'll come. Definitely I think the international breaks come at the right time. Definitely a good time for the players. Have a rest. Go again. Definitely, for sure. Here is my man of the match. I thought there were some good players that had a good performance. I thought Onana had a good game, to be honest. I thought Juan Bissaka was good. I thought Lindelof was good. Obviously got taken off. Martinez got good, but taken off by injury as well. I thought Delo was very good in this game as well. I thought Casemiro had an okay game as well. I thought Ericsson had a good game as well. I thought Anthony played very well. I think one of his best is being at for me in terms of wrapping back and doing his job defensively Fernandez had an okay game as well I think Fernandez everywhere to be honest and I thought Rashford had a good game I thought Martial was non-existent yet again it's a tough one to call maybe I'm just going to give this Rashford for the goal and also the assist by Ericsson as well so definitely I think it's got to be them two for both one of the matches for me and they did well I thought other players had a good game as well we're going to have to get better and we're going to have to improve for the next game for sure. How do we beat Brighton and Hover Albion? Now, obviously, we play Brighton in our next game on the weekend on Saturday at Old Trafford. This is going to be a tough game against Brighton. We always know that whenever we play Brighton, it's always a tough game. It's always a tight and tactical game with Brighton. They always give it everything that they've got. They've got a fantastic manager in Roberto De Zerbi. Brighton have got this nastiness about themselves as well. They really give it everything that they've got. Give it... 110%. Went for a, a tough game against Brighton. 
I think for United wise, I think you have to look at this game and say, yeah, it might be a tough game against Brighton. Yes, we lost this game last season. But I think this is a must win for Manchester United because I think you look at the other games that are being played on the weekend. United have got to win this game. We've got to bounce back. We've got to get back to winning ways. We need to sort of build some consistency back into the team. It's going to be a must win. We need the three points. And games like this against Brighton, we're going to have to find a way to win. I think Brighton are a class side. They're different gravy now. United are going to have to be ready for this game. Mentally, physically, we're going to have to prepare well for a game like this against Brighton. Players are coming back at different times, so it's due to the fact that the players have got to recover well and then they've just got to train well for the couple of days. We have to practically get it right in this game against Brighton, but Brighton, they're an awkward team. We know that they're a very awkward team to play against. We have to be ready for that. Tight encounters with them. This is going to have to be a game where we're going to have to find a way to win against them. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. We're going to have to find a way to win against Brighton but they'll pull us around, they'll push us around, or they'll play proactive football, they'll play with initiative, they're a very attacking, they play very attacking football, they're very clever, intelligent, uh, I think they put the ball into dangerous areas, they'll try to win in every single department as well, um, you know, they'll try to do the basics, win the 50-50s, win their duels, win the 1v1s, uh, but they'll try to outclass you, they'll out try to outpass you, uh, they'll be aggressive, very direct, player of width on the front foot. They'll bring the energy, they'll bring the high intensity, the high tempo. They'll try to be rampant, uh, the ruthless, the skillful side. But I think they're well organised and I think they're well coached as well. They'll defend well, they'll make it difficult to play through them. Uh, you know, they'll make it difficult to they'll make it difficult for us to play in between the lines you know uh frustrate it they'll fr look to frustrate us uh, defensively they'll be tight and compact very physical make runs in from behind they'll give it everything that they've got they'll get in between the lines they'll cause us problems they'll look to, they'll like to come forward and they'll take risks and they'll be and they'll be brave themselves but i think for united we're gonna have to defend properly uh in, in a game like this definitely for sure uh, I think it's all about we're going to have to stay switch up, uh, switched on up here as well. We're going to have to be ready for a game like this against Brighton as well. So defensively, we need to be organised. We need to keep it tight and compact. Defensively, frustrate them. We need to be ruthless, relentless, aggressive, high intensity, high tempo. Player of energy, create the chances, take your chances. We need to be clinical, get the crosses into the box, drag them out of position, be brave, take risks ourselves. You know, set pieces could come into play in a game like this as well. Uh, but we need to pair of width, get between the lines, got to close them down, don't let them get back don't let them back in the game. Don't leave any spaces open. Uh, you know, they'll show incredible team spirit, character and fight. But we have to do the basics right. Game management decision making will be vital in a game like this. We've got to get tight, don't let them get a shot off, sustain your attacks, do your do the basics when you're fifty fifties, when you're sick balls and when you jewels. Put them on the back foot, keep possession, full backs have got to be effective, force them to make mistakes, put them under pressure, don't let the wingers cut back inside, don't afford to make mistakes, make the runs in from behind, don't get pulled out of position, be explosive, keep Ferguson, Welbeck and Pedro quiet. Anyway, getting into the goals now, first goal mistake by Havertz, snatched by Ericsson, Ericsson has time and space on the ball, great ball to Rashford, Rashford cuts back inside, hits the post and scores for 1-0. Getting into the stats now, possession for Arsenal it was 54.8% for Man United, it was 45.2%. Goals for Arsenal it was 3 and for Man United it was 1. Total shots. For Arsenal it was 17 and for Man United it was 10. Shots on target for Arsenal it was 5 and for Man United it was 2. Shot aggressively for Arsenal it was 29.4% and for Man United it was 20%. Shots inside the box for Arsenal it was 12 and for Man United it was 7. Shots outside the box for Arsenal it was 5 and for Man United it was 3. Total passes for Arsenal it was 532 passes and for Man United it was 462 passes. Pass accuracy for Arsenal it was 87.2% and for Man United it was 84.8%. Getting to the substitutions now, Martial went off for Hoyland talking about Anthony's performance. Waved his Anamity, 54th minute straight shot at Aaron Ramsdale, come off in the 64th minute. A non-starter of a starter. Martinez went off Maguire talking about Lozandro's performance. Intervened to deny Ninkatia and had a solid first half, but for a cynical foul and seemed to injure himself. Anthony went off with Ganacho talking about Anthony's performance. Still too pericious with the ball, still... 2-1 dimensional and still one paced. Eric Ten Hag was regularly on his case. Lindelof went off at Evans talking about Victor's performance rightly but for a deliberate 
pack on Eddie Nketiah, but United's emphasis on the football rather than physical suited him. Had to come off. Next up, we've got Brighton. Brighton is sixth in the league. We know this is going to be a tough game against Brighton the weekend. But it's always a tough game against Brighton. We know this is going to be a tight and tactical game. We know that Brighton a very awkward team to play against as well. And everything that they cover, I think, fantastic. They're going to bring their A game. We need to bring our A game. I think in terms of United have got to have to bring a winning mentality here. We need to go in the right mindset, the right mentality. I think for United-wise, I think we've got to win this game. It's a must-win. We've got to get the three points. The fans need to get right behind this team to go and win this game against Brighton because we know how tough they are, Brighton, as well. They are going to give us one hell of a game. It's going to be a tough game. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a not an easy afternoon for United. I think the fans can definitely win over this team get right behind them give them the kick up the ass and I think definitely United could definitely go on and win this game against Brighton but with Brighton though I think what you've got to do is, is you have to keep it tight and compact defensively don't make any stupid mistakes just stay alert at all times you have to be ready for a game like this you have to bring the intensity you have to bring the energy you have to bring the tempo you have to be aggressive you have to be ruthless as well with this team we don't want to be playing counter-attacking football at home we've got to be on the front foot from the get-go so I think that'll be the message on the front foot get yeah, at this Brighton team and I think Eric Tenner will want to see a response he'll want to get back to winning ways he'll want to see a reaction from the players he'll want United to put in a, a solid team performance I think in a game like this against Brighton I think we need to play more diagonal balls play a bit more direct and play a little bit more expansive as well in this game against Brighton but we have to be very collective in a way and we have to show the unity about us and we have to defend as a unit as well in the game against Brighton as well we're in for a long long night of minutes here against Brighton but I think if we can come out well, start well in a game like this, take the game to them in the sort of the first half an hour. And I think if we can come out aggressive on the front foot, bring the energy, aggressive, high intensity, high tempo, energy, bring it all. And I think it's all about if we can create the chances, it's all about the players there in the right moment at the right time and if we can get an early goal on this Brighton team it'll be a dream start for United and then we want to build on it then and then we'll want to try to be more consecutive be more compact and be more be more organised and then we want to take control and we want to manage that game then and then it's all about the decision making as well no mistakes in a game like this against Brighton because they'll just punish you we've got to be ready for this game against Brighton Brighton without a doubt we have to bring the courage we have to bring the intent about us we need to show the conviction and we've got to turn up to a game like this against Brighton as well that's the one thing that we've got to do against Brighton we've got to turn up Brighton are scoring three goals per game Brighton are conceding 1.5 goals per game this will be Brighton's second away trip of the season they beat Wolves 4-1 away from home Brighton have won three drew none and they've lost one and they've lost the West Ham 3-1 uh, at home the players to look out for is Steele, Lamptey, Webster, Dunk and Heckel Esther Pinyan, Veltman, Milner March, Dahoud, Gilmore, Gross, Alana Matoma, Pedro, Insisto, Welbeck, and Diagra, Ferguson, and Fatty. Hope you guys enjoyed another video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in another video in the next couple of days. And peace. <laughs>